Do you live your dreams or do you spend your time dwelling on disease? I took a quality of life survey with my practice members a while ago and I want to go over your their responses and let you know how they answered. Some of their answers are really heart-wrenching and very compelling. So what is winning in your life? Are your dreams winning or is dwelling on disease winning? Welcome, I'm Dr. Lisa Ann Homick at Homick Advanced Chiropractic and this is Brain Snob Episode 3. Everyone should be a brain snob. It is not an insult, but it is a high compliment. It means that you know how the brain works, so you really harness your brain for a vibrant life. Because your brain makes your life, now let's, uh, let's do it. So here's the questions. Not a scientific, statistical, just a collection of answers. Very similar answers. Every, most everybody's on the same wavelength. And you will hear them right now. And it might spur on some ideas in your mind of how you want to take care of your health. So the first question is, how is your health concern affecting your life? How is your life disrupted? So here are the answers. Tired loss of energy that was repeated over and over again not motivated in the morning can't do difficult physical work can't exercise job prospects are limited that's a serious thing professional growth is hindered again that's serious so much time spent worrying difficulty walking difficulty taking stairs one person said that he or she was too anxious making plans that might have to be canceled. Time in pain is time spent away from activities. Every day is a challenge, one person also remarked. Decreased stamina, loss of mobility, that was a repetitious answer as well. Home a lot, resting, not going through my day gracefully, loss of contentment, decision making is difficult, I can't be available to others who need me. Eating for comfort rather than for health. Anxious, not getting enough rest. Sleep is disrupted. I keep going no matter what, somebody said. And a lot of activities are modified. So the next question was, what have you given up? And here are the answers. Gave up getting things done at home. This was repeated over and over and over. Just not doing things, whatever it is, taking care of the house, taking care of things inside the house, not getting done, just brushed aside on the back burner. Beloved hobbies are given up. Here's a various example. Sports, hiking, dancing, gardening, music, sewing, cooking, all given up. One person gave up coffee for health. Gave up activities, that was a repeated answer. Losing time with family and giving up time with family. Giving up fun. Too nervous to try new things in case it worsens my condition. Gave up time with grandkids. We can't do that. We have to be with the grandkids. That's crucial. And uh, that's that for that. So the next question was, how do you see your life one, five, and ten years from now? Different answers on each ends of the spectrum. Some were really looking forward to it. Some were feeling more depressed and discouraged. So one person said they're going to be training for a 15K. That's a good one. That's a plus. Maintaining health, better. A lot of people said they were just plain going to be better. So I like that. Healthy pregnancy, have a family, more energetic, mentally declining, a few people said. One person said busier. Another uh, response was more active, more adventures. Living someplace warmer was repeated a lot. So the, uh, the idea of a warmer climate is, uh, people are looking forward to that, and that's uh, clearly on their agenda. I don't blame them. Owning a home, more advanced in their career, a new career. Retired and having more time to take care of my health. This was a repeated answer. And I see that every day. People are so busy with their jobs. The job is the priority, priority, 
everything else is brushed to the side and they are crossing their fingers hoping to make it to retirement and uh, I'd like to get that mindset change that's why the brain snob episodes exist so we can do something right now we have immediate sources at our fingertips that we can get into right now uh, some people said they're just getting older that's that is the truth uh, continuing to work on mental and physical health more pain if I can't change it and then another person said on the path to wellness being sick helped me reconnect with my spiritual self so one person found that it was just an opportunity for total improvement reducing stress simplifying my life completely healthy another good outlook feeling younger upright short and to the point lots of grandkids to keep me busy uh, I expect decline but will organize my home to maximize functionality and some people said still walking still active the final question on the survey is what is your biggest fear regarding your future health no holds barred what is it what are you most afraid of and some diagnoses were listed some serious diagnoses that people are afraid of diabetes cancer loss of mobility loss of ability to walk loss of activity mental decline these were big fears just this an these answers were repeated over and over old injuries becoming chronic untreatable illness losing an organ due to disease fearing a disease that also took older family members dementia Alzheimer's inability to take care of myself the aging process being debilitated that was repeated multiple times unable to take care of my personal needs decided not to fear it face it as it comes was one answer death having a stroke and falling also biggest fears regarding future health so the takeaway on that is I'd like to focus on what can you do better how can your life be better rather than focusing on what could happen or how do we track disease and try to treat it um, I don't want to get to that point um, because disease when people talk about it, it they're focusing on how is it diagnosed they're categorizing symptoms uh, there's lab work there's x-rays uh, what's the prognosis is it just going to progress so these are details that we can we get lost in when we could be doing other things to better ourselves time is really sucked away when these issues are emphasized disease wins however when inflammation takes over so I want to focus on what can we do for the physiology forget about the disease we don't we don't need to worry about naming it and trying to come up with specific examples of it we want to just focus on the physiology what does the physiology need how do we cooperate with it rather than work against it so brain inflammation is the serious one because if your brain is inflamed your body your whole body is inflamed and people will focus on other areas of their body and if you're having pain and inflammation guess what your brains inflamed too I want to focus on that so my program is called BFA brain first always so the brain inflammation that I really take seriously is important because it's like the Pied Piper leading the poor mice off a cliff. I thought of that yesterday. I thought, what a funny picture in my mind. All these little mice going off the cliff following the Pied Piper. That's what brain inflammation is. And so let me give you some of the things we work on to improve your brain. And I call it my brain mnemonic. Here's the next prop. Spells brain. B-R-A. I -N. so when you look at the letter B it is balance your plate and I teach people how to eat a low carb keto diet because keto works low carb doesn't quite get you there low carb you will plateau 
keto with intermittent fasting works remarkably well and I teach people how to do that and if we go to our rest <laughs> you have to rest you need adequate sleep we can address why you're not sleeping that is definitely doable but R also can remind us that we have to rewire reinforce and rebuild and that's what brain training is helping your brain take on different traits getting rid of traits you don't like that aren't serving you well and the letter A of course is adjustments you come to the chiropractic office for the adjustments in order to heal the brain waves, keep them at a balanced state, and A also stands for activity, meaning exercising as well as social activity, so you're engaged with other people, good relationships, um, activities that help you uh, fulfill your purpose, and so you feel like you have meaningful purpose in your life. I, uh, we focus on information and inflammation, but information, anything new, you teach yourself is important for the brain, whether it's a new hobby, a musical instrument, you take up a sport, or reading, reading new things that really get you excited. Your brain is working and rewiring, and that's, that's a positive. Uh, inflammation, I want people to be well versed on in, in inflammation so they can take control of that. Inflammation is damaging to the DNA, and that's aging, and it also disrupts the mitochondria, and you need mitochondria. They are the energy factories of your cells. We need more of them, not less of them, and we don't want damaged mitochondria. N is nutrients. Uh, so I already mentioned balance your plate with a, an appropriate diet, but we still need nutrients because the soil is depleted. We cannot get enough nutrients anymore from our food, and also the way farming goes and processing and how food gets to market things are depleted so we need to add the nutrients back and I focus on targeted nutrients for specific organs depending on what needs boosting and we go over that in the office as well so inflammation is the word of the day inflammation kills your dreams I want you to have dreams not dwelling on disease so Inflammation will kill your dreams, and what is that? Your desires, your relationships, your energy, your activities, your ambition, as well as your memory, and the mitochondria. Those things all are hindered when you have inflammation. So we want to do the opposite. We want to kill the inflammation instead with the Brain First Always program, BFA. So there is my list. We will dive in more. I'll go over each one with more fun specifics at with ne the next episode so look for episode four coming soon and um, looking for my notes here and d dwell on the positive I don't want to dwell on disease all disease has the same source inflammation and that inflammation is just depleting your reserves so we want to keep that going so let's dive into a better future with a better brain. Learn how to move, feed, and talk to your brain. So here's what we do. Visit the office. Read my blog. It's called createpurpose.com. Watch the orientation video. Start a conversation in the comments section of this video. Hit the subscribe button. Hit that bell for notifications. Look for the next episode, as I said, because, uh, and become a brain snob and be a positive ripple effect in your community. Thanks for watching.